I think it's a tough time for marriage. I, you know, I wasn't married 20 years ago. It's hard for me to say, but I think some of the things that make it a very tough time for marriage is are the divorce rate, obviously, uh, the expectations that marriage is laden with. And these expectations, expectations include that you should be best friends, you should be business partners, you should be uh, progenitor, you know, breeders, you should be, um, uh, you know, um, passionately, madly in love and have a sort of a romantic, uh, you know, uh, sunset horizon. and. I think that um, uh, some of these, and, and, and now, especially with the decline of the extended family, which used to provide uh, more sort of social support to uh, couples, I think there's even more pressure on, on uh, parents. Uh, you know, they're ferrying their kids around to soccer practice and to uh, music lessons. And uh, I, I think there's just tremendous pressure on marriage. And then so when you bring in the sexual question, and you have a, a marriage that's been going on for 20 years in an age that is highly eroticized. You, you drive down the road and there are these Calvin Klein ads with 16-year-olds uh, who are, you know, half naked virtually. And um, the stuff they show on TV obviously is nothing like what it is. It's far more explicit than it was 20 years ago. Uh, pornography, which I've always been into at some level or another. I mean, I've I know about it as a guy. I mean, that's something I've always uh, checked out. When I was a kid, it was very hard to get por explicit pornography. And now it's sort of hot and cold running pornography into people's houses. And I think that uh, Spitzer, one of the things I look at wh when I consider Spitzer's case, I think that uh, and in a number of these cases, there have been a number of guys lately who have, um, you know, been caught stepping out. And I wonder if he wasn't at some level saying, you know, seeing stuff on the net and saying uh, this very explicit stuff on the net and saying, God, I, I should be getting this too. I, I, I should get this. And um, actually giving himself permission to do it because the culture is so eroticized. And uh, the one other factor I'd throw in is that um, I, uh, anecdotally anyway, there are just a ton of sexless marriages out there. So I think that... Um, and I don't think it's bad to have a sexless marriage. I mean, I don't have a sexless marriage. I have a sexual marriage. I'm really happy about that. It's not easy to attain. And, you know, you got to have the wife wear the blonde wig. And you got to do, uh, I think you got to trick yourself in one way or another to keep the passion going. But what I'm getting at, I suppose, is that after, um, uh, what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at is that it's okay to have a sexless marriage, and it should be okay. Other forms of sexual activity maybe should be okay, too. I think we should just get a little more sophisticated about this. And if I look at one of the achievements of my generation, it was to take uh, premarital sex, that portion of people's lives, and just sort of blow it up from no time, when it was illegal, immoral, or whatever, to seven years and ten years of premarital sex. Well, that kind of fun was delinked from marriage and was people had it and now i think in a way uh... when when the baby boomers are creating this sexless marriage thing maybe they should also maybe delink a little of the sex from marriage uh, i don't know i don't think it's that radical a proposal but I, i'm more exploring these ideas than than taking a stand on any of them